Greetings brothers and sisters in Jesus Christ of Nazareth. It is Monday the 9th of May. It time is 1.30 p.m. And the, today's theme is uh, the theme of victory. Victory belongs to Jesus. And I've got a very powerful message for you. One of my favorite, favorite accounts in, in Moses' life. Um, and it start, I'm going to start off with a, a verse, a victory verse, that victory belongs to Jesus. And we must put on a garment of praise. Hallelujah. When we are discomforted, we are, when we are feeling heavy, when the spirit of heaviness comes upon us, we have to put, up our, uh, put on our garments of praise and look up to the Lord and put our hands up in praise and worship. Because the victory belongs to Jesus. And there's a battle in our minds for that victory. For that understanding and belief and our faith has to be in jesus that he has defeated all evil hallelujah second corinthians 2 verse 14 now thanks be unto god which always causeth us to triumph in christ and maketh manifest the savor of his knowledge by us in every place in every situation in darkness now exodus 17 and all the congregation of the children of Israel journeyed from the wilderness of Sin. After their journeys, according to the commandment of the Lord, and pitched in Rephidim, and there was no water for the, for the people to drink. Wherefore the people did chide with Moses, and said, Give us water that we may drink. And Moses said unto them, Why chide you with me? Wherefore do ye tempt the Lord? And the people thirsted there for water, and the people murmured against Moses, and said, Wherefore is... Thus that thou hast brought us up out of the land of Egypt to kill us and our children and cattle with us. The people are moaning and groaning because they are thirsty. And Moses cried out to the Lord saying, What shall I do unto this people? They be almost ready to stone me. And the Lord said unto Moses, Go on before the people and take with thee elders of Israel and thy rod. Wherewith thou smotest the river and take in thine hand and go. Behold, I will stand before thee there upon the rock in Horeb, and thou shalt smite the rock, and there shall come out water out of it, and the people may drink. And Moses did so in the sight of elders of Israel. There was two accounts of this, in this moment. This is one of them. And he called the name of the place Massa and Meribah, because the chiding of the children of Israel, and because they tempted the Lord, saying, Is the Lord among us or not? When you are heavy and you are discomforted, this is where you always find your place. Is there a God? And this is a prime example. You have to do a count of your life and how the Lord has delivered you, even if you did not believe that the Lord existed or He was working in your life. <clears throat> then came Amalek. Amalek is evil. Then came Amalek and fought with Israel and Rephidim. And Moses said unto Joshua, Choose us out men and go out fight with Amalek. Tomorrow I will stand on the top of the hill with the rod of God in my hand. So Moses, so Joshua did as Moses had said to fight him and fought with Amalek. And Moses, Aaron and Hur went up to the, that's H-U-R, went up to the top of the hill. And it came to pass when Moses held up his hand that Israel prevailed. There is a prime example of Moses giving praise and worship to the Lord and is believing that he, that the Lord is on their side and they are going to defeat evil. And Moses, but Moses' hands were heavy. Sorry, sorry. And it came to pass when Moses held up his hand, he had to keep it up for a long time and look up to the Lord. And it came to pass when Moses held up his hand that Israel prevailed. And when he let his hand down, Amalek, his enemy, Israel's enemy, prevailed. So this is a prime example of victory belongs to God. And you must hold through, through oh, when the spirit of heaviness comes upon you, you have to hold up your hands and look up to the Lord. No matter how tough it is, and just call out his name, Jesus, call out that, because that, there's victory in its name, in the name himself, Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Okay, but Moses' hands were heavy and they took the stone and put 
But Moses, listen to this, but Moses' hands were heavy and they took a stone and put it under him. And he sat there on. And Aaron and her stayed up there. And so now Moses is sitting and Aaron on the one side and her on the other side and they're holding up his hands. Because he's getting tired. And that's it's, that weariness that comes upon us. It happens to us all. When we are discomforted and the enemy is coming up against us, we get tired and it's our faith. So now the faith of Aaron and her is holding up Moses' faith. Holding up his faith to the Lord. The one on the, the, one, on the one side and the other on the other side. And his hands were steady until the going down of the sun. And Joshua, who is the, the head of the army right now, discomforted Amalek and his people with the edge of the sword. And the Lord said unto Moses, Write this. Here's the account. That, this is where it, uh, Exodus 17 comes from. And the Lord said unto Moses, Write this for a memorial in a book and rehearse it in the ears of Joshua. For I will utterly put out the remembrance of Amalek from under heaven. And Moses built an altar and, the, and called the name of it Jehovah Nisi. Victory, victory, brothers and sisters. Jehovah Nisi. For he said, because the Lord has sworn that the Lord will have war with Amalek from generation to generation. You'll see it's happening today, the 9th of May. The war against Amalek from generation to generation throughout eternity until Jesus comes. Now, brothers and sisters, this is one of my favorite, favorite um, uh, accounts. Because it's a supernatural event because it, the victory all depended on one man's faith in God to protect the Israelites. And that they will have victory because they found themselves in a place where it was not theirs. But through the faith in the Lord God, He will bring you into from a place of despair into a place of into a right standing with God and in a place of victory where, we, where you can put on your garment of praise and thank the Lord. Now, how do you do this garment of praise? Here is a prime example in Isaiah 61. Even though your life is heavy, brothers and sisters. Just hold on. Uh, Isaiah 61. Okay. The Spirit of the Lord is upon me, because the Lord, because the Lord hath anointed me to preach good tidings unto the meek. He hath sent me up to bind the broken heart, to proclaim liberty to the captives and, and the opening of the prison to them that are bound, to proclaim the acceptable year of the Lord and the day of vengeance of our God, to comfort all that mourn, to appoint to them that mourn in Zion, to give them to give unto them beauty for ashes and the oil for joy the, of the morning for the morning, the garment of praise for the spirit of heaviness that don't discomfort that they might be called the trees of righteousness, the planting of the Lord that he might be glorified. Hallelujah. That is a powerful account. You have to, when you feel like you're in a place of despair, you have to put on your garment of praise, brothers and sisters. We are in this day where there is so much that we are contending with the, the spiritual warfare in second heaven against humanity is at stake. Billions of souls that are being distracted from that there is a God, there is a Lord because it's hard to see through this thick cloud of darkness. Darkness is not a color. It is and it's not a lack of light. It is a spirit. There's a prime example in the movie, the uh, Sandra Bullock movie, The Bird Cage, Bird Box, The Bird Box. There we go. I don't, I don't want you to go watch those things, but that is a prime example of how darkness works. It is an entity. It is a plague. Plagues are spiritual wickedness in high places. But the Lord can count it with with His goodness, with Jesus, with the victory that we, we can stand in Jesus. 
Hallelujah. Amen.